My name is William Wynn from FlyCorvair.com. Welcome to Oshkosh 2021. The engine today, uh, Chevrolet Corvair engine converted for aircraft use. Uh, I am the uh, owner operator of FlyCorvair.com. This is my 32nd year in the Corvair engine conversion business. And what we have here represents not new and exciting, but old and proven. So it's an evolutionary development rather than something new and revolutionary. In experimental aviation, uh, the winning model of how you get uh, people to uh, fly their airplane to air shows is Lycoming and Continental. So what we have here is a, the same philosophies of Lycoming and Continental uh, applied to a more affordable package. The engine is based on the Chevrolet Corvair that was built from 1960 to 69. There happen to be two million of them produced. There are about 50 or 60,000 left. Uh, there are plenty of cores, engines to re be rebuilt. Uh, minimum cost to build a really good Corvair core, a really good Corvair engine is about 10,000 bucks. We also offer kits and completed engines, but the primary mission is to teach people how to build their own engine. Been doing this a long time. We have about 350 people flying. Most popular applications are Zeniths, uh, 750s, stalls and cruisers, also 650s. We have a long lead of, uh, of uh, 601 XLs and other 601 models that flew, but it also is served traditionally in Pete and Poles, uh, Kit Foxes, KRs, uh, Bearhawk LSA is a uh, popular application. So uh, fits in a lot of different airframes. First and foremost, and I'll be one of the very few guys to ever say this on camera directly to you, the reason why car engines have a really bad reputation is they earned it. Uh, and the problem why they earned it was they were forever seen as the lowest cost alternative, just go to a junkyard and rip it out and put it in an airplane. And it was perennially the choice of guys who really were uh, unwilling to learn stuff and unwilling to spend the required money to do this. So they don't have a great track record in that respect. However, uh, I would say the most important thing is who you choose to work with on this stuff. Now, there have been a lot of people who have come and gone. I've been uh, an EAA member for more than 30 years. Uh, and in the length of time that I've been doing this, uh, I'm going to say virtually every, other than Lycoming, uh, even Continental has had a change in ownership in there. But very, very few people stand the test of time. Now, there are good engines that have come along, and there are engines that were ahead of their time or the wrong people, but there have been also been an awful lot of businesses that have shown up, operated for three years, tanked, reappeared as another LLC. They tanked that one and on to the next one. But the most important choice that you can make on your engine is who are you going to work with? If you're going to work with Lycoming, good, they're a proven company. If you're going to work with an auto engine company, it isn't exactly which engine you choose, but it has to start with who are you working with. It has to have mutual trust and respect going both ways. So when I work with people, I refer to them as my builders. If you refer to people as customers, you get people who are spending money. If you refer to people as builders, you're naturally attracting and treating people as people who want to learn something and work on it and end up with a product. So this is what's really critically important. The appeal of the Corvair motor is that we offer training in a very, very simple package. My personal philosophy about reliability is this. The most reliable machine is going to be the simplest machine that does the job operated by a well-trained person who understands the engine. So you can't shop for that. You can't buy it by the pound. You, it doesn't come in a bag. You have to put some effort into it. You have to have the correct machine, preferably the simplest machine, but there's always going to have to be some operator training. Anybody who says that their operator training is not a factor in reliability really isn't being serious. So in our program, I have found the simplest machine that will do a wide variety of jobs. It doesn't replace 150 Lycoming. 
and it doesn't replace uh, a 912 in really light applications, but there's a wide variety of aircraft that used to be powered by C-85s, O-200s. Some that were powered by 912s can be Corvair powered. Uh, even some airplanes that were traditionally powered by VWs, like KRs, can easily be powered by Corvair engines. So within its group of engines, it does offer the simplest engine that to do the job, direct drive, air-cooled, but it also comes with training and judgment and everything that I can share from my experience and transfer to people who want to learn stuff. Now, Americans very good at buying stuff, not very good at learning stuff, but the motto of the EAA is learn, build, and fly. The modern of many people when the motto of many people when they come here is choose finance and operate. And choose finance and operate does not have happy endings like learn, build, and fly. So on the engine, the simplest way again is direct drive, air-cooled, horizontally opposed, six-cylinder smoothness. The conversion process on it is this engine is converted. It is not taken out of a car and installed into an airplane. So all the decisions that we have on the components of how we selected them and what we did were based on it actually converting it to aircraft use. So even the valves that we use, the rotators that we have, the valve seat material that's installed, the piston design, all unique to aircraft, but they were tailored for the environment of operating both in 100 low lead and also on 91 octane car gas. The engine is 225 pounds, dressed and ready to fly. It's about 15 pounds more than that, sitting on the mount, ready ahead of the firewall. Uh, the engine, for comparison purposes, is about 35 pounds heavier than a 912 Rotax. Uh, it is about 10 pounds lighter than an O200. It is uh, about uh, 40 pounds lighter than a 235 Lycoming. It's effectively the same weight uh, installed as a Viking engine. Uh, it's approximately uh, uh, UL Power uh, 350 is a very, very light engine, and this engine's approximately 50 pounds heavier than that. Uh, it also uh, is uh, not in the same price category also. So uh, to work, your engine has to have, be within the acceptable rate, weight range. It also has to be within the acceptable power range. This particular Corvair is 110 horsepower. We have models that have much larger displacement. Uh, we have displacements available uh, up to 3.3 liter. Those kits are sold by Sport Performance Aviation and they have billet steel crankshafts made in the United States available for those. They are uh, flagship motors. They're really good. They're even lighter than this. Uh, however, uh, this represents the base model that we start with uh, converting in. At 110 horsepower, it is 2,850 cc's. It requires no machine work to the case. It becomes a bolt-together process. No one who's building a Corvair has to be a machinist. All you're doing is uh, essentially an assembly job under our supervision and tutelage. If we looked at this engine, there are three ways to uh, uh, get this engine. If you bought this engine, including the carburetor and the intake manifold from me, this engine, fully assembled test run with logs, would come to you for $13,600. If you wanted it as a full kit uh, with the case assembled, the heads assembled, and the cylinders assembled, where you're going to uh, put the accessories on and do the assembly on it, that's $12,600. If you were going to buy the conversion manual from me, do uh, all of the uh, uh, work and buy the parts as you afford them, as budget and time allows, we do sell all the parts individually. Uh, and if you were going to put your sweat equity into it and a little bit of uh, find yourself a core locally motor to work with, you know, pay maybe $250 for the core, you'd still be looking at spending about $10,000 to build a replica of this motor. Let me rephrase that, $10,000 to build a clone of this motor. We don't want something that looks like this motor, we want to teach you to build a clone of this motor because if you clone this motor, it will work as well as this one does. The TBO that people frequently discuss on engines, uh, well established on Lycomings, uh, n known quantity. Uh, I've been doing this for 32 years, and the TBO on the current engines that we produce is at least 1,500 hours. Every guy thinks, I'm going to fly that each year. Uh, in reality, most people fly, even uh, uh, aggressive uh, uh, home builders fly about 150 hours a year. So it's 10 calendar years 
if you built the engine or assembled it under our direction, it's not difficult to uh, say, I'm going to take a look inside. But uh, we have a lot of engines out there, uh, out of a fleet of several hundred engines flying. I uh, get second owners who have uh, prop strikes, uh, bring the engine in for a teardown. I do a lot of that in the shop, get a couple of them a year. It gives me a look at engines that have 900 or 1,000 hours on them. And while we're doing the addressing the prop strike on the motor by replacing some internal gears and having the crank magnum flux, I also can take a look at the wear on it. And there is negligible wear on engines that have 1,000 hours on them. So 1,500 hours, not worn out. Uh, but we'll just call it that for right now on a conservative basis. And if at that point you wanted to replace every moving wearing component inside the engine, you're talking about $2,200. And if you were the person who built the engine in the first place, or you attend any of my training seminars, uh, you'll be the person doing it. So it doesn't involve a large labor charge. My two websites are flycorbear.com and flycorbear.net. I also have a Facebook group, WW Fly Corvair, and uh, that has uh, uh, an immediate presence. I have a blog that we write to, small YouTube channel, uh, a lot of ways to contact us. Go check out the website, and if you're really interested uh, and the stuff appeals to you, uh, you can find my cell phone number on there.